Mostly worm castings on them. I look in there and see what's what they're made out of. That's what's important. A lot of them are adulterated. This was our worm castings that I bought, and the reason I put that up, this stuff looked like mud. I ended up using it. It looked like worm castings to me. So this was a poor choice on my part. But so I just put it up there so you guys can actually see. E.B. Stone is a giant company, and they make a lot of products, so I wouldn't use the worm castings again. <clears throat> so then we're going to take all these ingredients, and we're going to mix them up. And there's several ways to do it. You know, I used to use a kiddie pool. This is a good way to do it. This is the first house me and Miss Jill lived in when I came to the uh, Northwest. And uh, you can see a kiddie pool, man. It's pretty simple. I went and got it and fixed it up in my garage. And we mix everything up really good. Uh, oh, this soil was so chunky. There's actually a picture of me coming up here. Of me breaking the crap up because it was so chunky. So I had to actually get down on my hands and break it up. Uh, since then, I actually have a screen that I do this. But just showing me clean it up. But there's so many ways to do it. This is in another place. I just stretched the tarp out so that I don't adulterate the soil and I just mix it up. I mean, I'm not trying to be redundant here, but you put it all together in layers like a lasagna. You mix it up until you, until you don't see any, anything else. And you just keep mixing and mixing and mixing. And you put it in these cans. And once it's in these cans, I put two gallons of water on this can. And this is something we need to spend a little bit of time about. He asked about water. You have to put enough water on this stuff to become alive. So if you go out there three months after you make it and you stick your hand down and you pick up a bunch of dry soil, it probably didn't activate. It was probably just sitting there dry. Um, I can now actually, we all know it rains a lot, I just take the tops off of them and let it rain on there the right amount of time. But two gallons is about the right amount of water to put on this thing. And a couple of things will happen when you do that. Number one, the top of the lid will sweat on warm days and it'll condensate up onto the lid and then right back into the dirt. And you'll get on top of it what looks like a web of white fungi. Uh, it, it just looks like fingers that drew all the way across, which is really funny. It leads to the first question people make super soil. They go, oh my God, my super soil is molding. I can't use it, I'm going to throw it out. I've seen people throw it out because it has actual, the web growing on top of it. But that actually means it's, it became alive. And so now it's, it's, it's an alive thing that you can put your plants into. So how much you water this is really important. And then we're going to talk about activation. In the original Super Soul um, demonstration that I did, I actually said it needs to cook. And this was a really poor choice of words because activate or inoculate would have been a better word. Because it doesn't need heat. But no, you can't make it outside right now in Seattle. I mean, if you guys went out and mixed up a batch of super soil, put it in your garbage cans, and set it out back of your house, it's not really going to become alive to spring. You know? Maybe a couple of sunny days and it would, but so you can't make it. Having said that, I actually lived in Winnipeg when it was 40 degrees below zero. It's the butthole of the world, let me tell you. Um, but when I lived there, I just made it outside and then I dragged them inside to the grow room and I set them in the corners. I actually built a clone table across the three bins so I could have a work area that makes sense to utilize your space. So it has to be warm, but not hot. And that cooking really got me into trouble. It doesn't have to be put in the oven. It doesn't even need sunshine. It just needs a normal temperature. I would say between 70 and 90 degrees. It can't get too hot, surprisingly, but the web stops growing if you get it too hot. So in the middle of the summer, if it's sitting in the direct sunlight, the web goes away. I, I thought it was weird the first time it happened. Yeah, I don't know, you know, whatever happens. It, it, you know, the UV rays and all the sun and the heat, it just goes away. But then when the sun goes away for a certain period of time, it comes back. So I make all my soil up in the summertime. And I let it sit all summer long. And then it sits out there now. If it's frozen, I drag it in until it thaws and I use it. So once it's been activated just like dirt i mean if you go out and you dig up some dirt from a rich farm you can't hurt it right you could put it in the oven you're not hurting it you could freeze it you could turn it into ice it's just dirt so once it's activated we're good to go as far as super soil. Question? okay six weeks is about the minimum um, it's really nice that you asked that. There's some guys right now on one of my forums and he's using it in two weeks and he's having good results. 
you know, I don't spend a lot of time arguing with somebody that's great, that's great. We've used it that early, and you can actually see the plants don't like it. They, they're like, ah, you know, they get leaf tip burn, they get the claw, you know, the claw on the whole plant wants to claw over. And they're just kind of pissed off, you know, that, that isomite, there's no way it's broken down. That lime in two weeks, there's no way the lime is broken down in two weeks. Now, this is, I told you, I knew the questions would lead me to places I went to. About two years ago, dioxide wanted to know why super soil works. And I spent a year figuring out I still don't know why it works. Because we bought test kits and probes. One of the things we were really obsessed with was the whole pH factor. Because when you mix it up, it has a very, very low pH, about 5. And you really wouldn't want to put any living thing in 5 soil, you know. So we bought one of those probes and we stuck it in there and we kept watching it. And it took at least a month before it even moved off of six. So it went to five to six in a month. At six weeks, it leveled off at seven, which also taught, taught me something about lime. If you put lime into a product and you put the right amount of lime, it will eventually balance itself at seven. I mean, that's what it does. It doesn't go higher than that. So. Um, but so with that probe, it actually taught us, we could actually see how long it took to activate. So the lime is the most important thing. What the lime is doing is countering the acidity of the fat guano, the blood meal, and the bone meal. Those are all acidic things because they're, they're, they're poop, you know, so they're acidic. So the lime has to equalize them. So six weeks is about the minimum, and I know people don't want to wait six weeks, but the one thing you'll see a constant thread in this course is that there's only one path to, to dank. And I know that's a cheeky term, but really, if you, if, you, if you rush it, if you cut corners, if you, you know, don't do it the proper way, then you won't achieve the final result. Other questions? I've got a question. Yeah. So, uh, you mentioned soil conditioners. I've been uh, using, and not to a science, uh, Fox Farms Ocean Forest, Fox Farms Happy Frog Soil Conditioner, which does have bark chunks, mm -hmm. and then uh, cocoa core and perlite, not to a science, but mixing it in my garage with that. Uh, that there, uh, Fox Farms Happy Frog Soil Conditioner has a list of, it's like 14, 17, or even 20 mycorrhizides that includes in there. Now, some of my dirt, of course, because I get I mix more, does get you know a long time to sit and activate. I do get it all nice and muddy. But uh, what do you think about their soil conditioner? I haven't really seen say leaves, but it does have chunks of bark in there. And I was just always saying, oh hey, you know, just a little more. Little yeah, no, I, he, I, I'm pretty good question because I, I actually I had that uh, lime chunk of uh, really limey chunk of uh, Chernobyl last night. Oh okay, yeah, you found the lime. Oh yeah, that's oh, cool. Yeah. It's really cool, by the way, diverting when you write a description because of something you did. We don't make them up. We actually... Oh, no, we're looking for it. Yeah, and you guys find it. It's just, dude, it's such a justification. You're like, dude, I found the line. I was like, wow, I'm not full of shit. That's cool. Oh, yeah, I found lemon 3D. I have uh, cheese and ice cream, Dairy Queen. I'm hoping to find the red uh, berry here. Cool. So on, uh, let's talk about other soils as well. My last choice, but it's not a bad choice, is... Um, Ocean forest okay. mixed with light warrior one to one. Now let's spend let's spend like two minutes on ocean forest soil. It, they sell it and it doesn't work. It, it's terrible for starting seedlings in. It'll fry your clones. It has this weird ratio, and I wish I could be all Bill Nye the Science Guy and tell you what's wrong with it, but it's just wrong. But when you mix one bag of light warrior into the ocean uh, forest. It seems to fix whatever the problem was. I think the phosphorus sweat is all off. And I think when you mix the light warrior, which is basically like mixing you know, more flour into something to, to cut it, you know, it seems to work great. It's not my first choice, but it is a really good choice. Like I said, sunshine mix still works really good. We just tried the new sunshine. Yes. I wish I knew the name of it. Advanced for What's the name of it? Sunshine Advanced. Sunshine Advance, yes, red, yellow, real yes. fancy bag, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I like it a lot, but I can tell you right now it's not as good as Roots because what we did was we put five clones in it, we put five clones in the uh, Roots, and the five clones in the Roots are just banging it out and going fast. Do you find that the Roots dries in the same fashion? Because the thing I love about the new Mix 4 is it dries as a whole rather than in pockets. 
It's incredibly consistent for me. It's been ground and shaped. It, it's it's yeah. It looks like a bag of processed. I mean, it's perfect. Yeah, it really is. It. But I, I also thought it was a little airy. Yeah. Uh, the, the heaviness of the roots I like. Well, let's talk about Happy Frog. Uh, I have a guy who helps me my character, but we, we talked about him last night. He's the bean counter, and uh, the bean counter lost his job due to the economy. Not his job with me, but his real job in life. That's why he's not here. But uh, he he actually was commenting on the happy fog. And this is a guy who's only grown you know, two months with me. But he didn't like the way the happy fog compacted. If anybody's ever grown with happy fog, yeah. it becomes semen like yeah. Yeah. really fast, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of a pain in the ass. So what we do is the same thing we do with everything. We took, we took five vortex seedlings and we put them in the happy frog. And we put five vortex seedlings in the roots. And the roots is just killing the happy frog. I've talked about their soil condition earlier. More barking, not the, not the soil. Not the I, the yeah, I, as far as specific products, you know, I just haven't tried them yeah, all. Just, it has like 20 by 4 so Yeah, and size. so... You know the kind of thing I would do, and, and since you've mentioned it now, and if I see it, I'll grab a bag and add it to the super soul. That's the kind of stuff I do. And I, I urge you guys that are really long term. How many people in here have been growing in soil for a long time? Let's see how many people in here grow in soil. Twelve years. Right on. Okay. See, I urge you guys to play with the recipe. I mean, I really do. This is just a recipe. And if I gave you a recipe for macaroni and cheese, could you make it better in your own home, to your own taste, to your own plants? Yeah, of course you could, you know, so I recommend that. I don't recommend somebody that hasn't been growing in soil for a long time to, to try this because, you know, it's going to be, you don't know what to look for and you're not, you know, skilled enough. I'm not a good troubleshooter. I've got to be honest with you on that. And when I have a plant that's growing and it's unhappy, I've been known just to drag it out back and kill it. And then start again, you know, because once a plant is sick in soil, if you're trying to, you know, change the pH or you're trying to add fertilizer, you cannot flush super soil. Let's, let's talk about that for a second. Super soil is very heavy, and there's no way you could pour water through it. I mean, if you poured enough water on super soil to flush the plant, then the pot weighs so much that you chance getting pithy in the root rot. So, um, we talked about this last night. One of the reasons that I use super soil, and we'll get to the pots when we do the transplanting, is because I'm not in my garden right now. And it's just fine right now, you know? So I get four days with super soil in one of these pots to go experience life. And then everybody in this room, I'm on a sim as a grower, so you guys all have a ball and chain up to your leg. And it's just straight, right? And if you're hydro, you can't take four days out of your garden. You drip and feed, ebb and flow. I had a marble shoot out of an ebb and flow system one time and put 200 gallons of water in my downstairs. Yeah, you can't, uh, don't use a marble for your plug. Oh, yeah. <laughs> TC, you got a question? Does super soil work with all strains like cheese or something? Oh, good question. Thanks. No, it, it doesn't. Cheese hates super soil. Thank God cheese quake doesn't. Um, yeah, you know, cheese, uh, the super soil does not work for every strain. And, and we'll talk about this in transplanting a little bit. Remember when I said it was a concentrate? Plants that use a lot of nutrients, uh, we will fill the pot almost 70% full and then use the base. Plants that, you, that hate super soil, I'm using about four inches of super soil in the Exodus cheese cup right now. Um, I will tell you that this is not just something that, how many people grow the cheese? TGS. <laughs> you do? It's hard to grow, right? It's, it's picky. Okay, see, see it's not me. I, I, we've never talked about cheese before ever, and he's just telling me. It, when it, it, veg is just fine. Right. Oh, it just right. looks so great. And you flip the switch on it, and the leaves turn yellow, and they start falling off of it. And I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with you? All the other plants in the garden are green. It's just the cheese is, is unhappy. It's an old skunk, and for some reason it doesn't like it. I can tell you the two things that help that are cow mag. That helps a lot and backing off on the soil. But what's really weird about a cheese specifically is if we just try to grow it in roots, we get really great results in about week four, and then we run out of gas. I'm like, what the hell is wrong with you? First you didn't want food, and now you want food? So what we do is we use super soil as a top dress. So we go in about week three of flowering, and we put about four inches of super soil on top of the plant. Then as we water the plant, it runs down through there. So, um, 
can you make this super soil and like one of those composters where you spin it? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, you could. I like to store it in plastic. I just don't like to store it in metal because I'm worried about rust. Uh, that's just all. I, I've seen this. Uh, i got to tell you guys. I, I keep asking for a show of hands. If y'all don't like that, tell me to stop. How many people read The Mist? You guys read The Mist? That dude made a fucking tractor trailer full of super soil. I mean, literally, they pulled up with pallets full of roof, did, roots and kicked them out of the semi because there's no load dock up there. He had a ton of worm castings on the site. It was the biggest pile of super soil I ever saw in my life. And they grew over 120 pounds with it. But outdoors, it ran out of gas. It's because there's rain and there's, I don't know, it's outdoors. It's a different, it's a different world than indoors. Uh, indoors, when I'm in a pot, I never run out of gas on strains. Unless I get way, way, way too big. Um, and when I mean big, I mean a seven foot plant that's producing 10 to 14 ounces. They can run out of gas in a seven foot pot. So. Um, the the guy last night was asking all the questions about the parking town. He's not here, which I guess is good. But um, I wanted to tell you that I believe the reason he was having the problem is he was leaving his plants in the pots too long. If you leave your plants in the pots too long, if you try to veg your plants too long, the stems become really barky and woody. And I've never gotten quality pot off of a, a plant like that. If you leave your plants in veg too long. I think a plant needs to veg properly with the right amount of energy, get budded, and finish, especially indoors. Outdoors is different because the root ball can keep growing. Indoors, all we're doing is filling this up, which leads to talk about air pots. Rob, I'll, I'll get you one second. Uh, Thanks, Doc. Like how long you was too long? Well, you know, 90 days is the longest I've ever oh, veg your pork along. Yeah, so you know, you're nine, you're nine weeks in there in the veg, um, excuse me, you're three months in there in veg, and then you're two months in there, so your total is 20 weeks in this pot? Yeah. You know, plant's not going to really like that. What about, that. say, 20 weeks in smart pots? Uh, I knew someone was going to bring up smart pots, and this is what I'll say about smart pots. I think they are awesome, and I've seen really good results from them. A 20 gallon smart pots. Yeah, no, I, I've seen, we were, the Mist, he did a bunch of Jack hair and the 50 gallon smart pots. He got really good results, but they dry out really fast. And I, when, you, when your plants dry out, the PPM of the soil changes. I don't know if y'all realize this, but the roots are in contact with the soil, and the soil has moisture in it. As the moisture dries out, the PPM of the soil goes up, so the strength of the soil goes up. If your plant dries out too much in between waterings, it actually starts to look stressed out. Have you guys experienced this? Everybody let their plants will, and they start to look bad. That's because they dry it out too much. So if you're a person who's on top of your garden enough to use the smart pots, I have nothing bad to say about them. They're self-pruning. They're supposed to stop this problem with the roots getting intertwined in the bucket. Uh, I have not done a side-by-side -side because I'm the most stubborn human being you have ever seen in your life. I'm producing the best marijuana of my career with these seven-gallon pots. I'm not going to change. I used to... I used to um, and next to this, okay, so you don't have the root ball with them, but if you touch the side of the pot when you're watering, you break the surface tension of the pot and you leach out, I mean, all of the roots are running on the floor. I've seen really good results from them, and you got to understand that when I'm not teaching or growing, I'm living in the forums listening to what the world has to say about cannabis. And uh, the other reason I have a problem with these is I drag my plants out and take pictures of them. I mean, you guys have seen the magazine. I mean, I can't do that with an AirPod. So I have no, I don't have anything bad to say about AirPods. I really don't. I just don't use them, and it's not what we're, what I teach. Well, we're, we're talking about long bench time. So I yeah. have a cycle, so I do a few in every week, two weeks. Yeah. So I end up having a lot of veggies that have, yes, they have a lot of time going, and you know, some of them lost track on because those babies. Yeah, well, we have a really good friend. He's one of my, he was one of my closest friends. His name's Pigs. I don't know if y'all have seen Pig Wax. He's, uh, hey, we, we love him to death. The guy yields more pot off a plant than anybody I've ever seen. I mean, he got 24 ounces off of Vortex. And his Vortex was, dude, are you kidding me? I get six. And his, he's a really, really good grower. But his pot's not as good as mine. It's in that pot too long. It's, it's haggard a word you can associate with Bud. You know, his pot is worn the hell out by the time it's harvested. So yield-wise, he kills it. He gets 30 ounces or something off of Kim D. 
I guess 20 something ounces off of Vortex. Um, the uh, jelly bean he was doing, he's getting pounds, right? Two pounds. Months? Yeah, off one plant. And a huge ass air pot, big stick, looks like a looks like an ornamental tree in a mall. Right? Ninety days. So you can't you cannot knock the guy's yields. And and he grows really great bud. You know, and it's an awful egotistical, snobbish thing to say my pot's better than this. But it is. And I think a lot of that's because of that barky stem. Uh, that's just not when you're getting higher THC because you're not stressing it to I think you do get stressed, you know, I really do. Having said that, the other thing, the other side is just as bad. Root and bloom, everybody, you know, root and bloom, when you, you know, remember the tubes, everybody's doing hydro. As soon as it roots, you stick them in there, you flower them. You know, back in the days when the guys' numbers didn't matter and people were running 300 plants in a room. I don't know if you guys know, in Canada, the big thing is collies. It's a big spinning thing, you put a thousand. Can you imagine taking a, a thousand clones and loading them into the machine? I'd go, go to the dentist. Um, <laughs> But, but, but they used to do that. I don't think that pot was as mature as, as stuff that's grown in, in seven gallons. So I think there's both sides. I think it's too old, but I also think there's, you know, it's got three roots, let's stick it in there and bud it. I feel the same way about blooming from seed, by the way. And I know there are people out there that just completely love to prove me wrong with my own strains. You know? I, I grew out Chernobyl and I budded it from seed and look what I got. But I still say that the plant grown properly for 60 days and then budded properly is going to be better. So for more, we move on to the next topic. Are there any more questions on soil? Really? Go ahead. It's the bone meal. That I've read there's two different types of bone meal. There's steamed bone meal and there's dried bone meal. And I've heard, and I can't remember which is the better to use the steam than dry. Steam, God, I'm so stupid. Steam, steam just sounded better to me. Yeah. I didn't do a lot 